What is going on guys? It is your boy Cecil here bringing us a video here today, bringing guys a Photoshop tutorial on how to create your own very cool, uh, like vibrant, curve, don't know what, what I have, like curve gradient is what I have so far, uh, stream package design, as always I guess, every like two weeks or two weeks, uh, two months or so I like to bring you guys a cool little stream package um, that you guys can go ahead and create yourselves and or do it over, change colors around, and also get the template at 200 likes as always, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below which most likely be, as I just said, the PSD of the video that you guys are seeing here today. Um, as of right now, okay, we're like 600, 600 people. Uh, have to subscribe in order for us to hit also we have to get a little less on subscriptions that'd be cool too um to get 100k bros we're so freaking close i'm super excited for it and i have something super special and i wish and i can't wait I, i'm personally gonna get it personally for me soon um to test out the quality hint hint and then it'll be coming out very soon every uh everyone that i've shown so far has absolutely loved it and i hope you guys enjoy it too but with that being said let's just get into this video of course as you guys want to and uh yeah you have to really need nothing else besides some pen tool work um color create uh color theory i guess you would say i'm using personally blue and orange for this case here today you can use green blue you can use really cool comment colors all that good stuff whatever colors you guys want to end up using just change around as always when we're going through the video and uh, with that being said let's just go and get this thing going and yeah let's just let's just get this started all right guys let's go and get this thing going right here right now so i want to first thing I'm gonna do is actually start off with the actual cool little shapes and realistically there's only three uh, four or so shapes here um which is this one right here this actual background uh, orange excuse me I'm said green for some reason um this blue right here and then this right here these two things these little sort of like gradients that are kind of like helping tie everything together is also this right here so I guess you would say six shapes um six different shapes and these shapes right here are also just duplicates so it's very very simple very easy all you got to do is just know how to understand the pen tool just a little bit because we're only using it for a few a uh, few 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 english is hard shapes okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer and i'm just gonna just choose this kind of ignore that for a second um we're just gonna be using that as a reference to go back and forth just to show you guys how we're going uh or what we're gonna be doing next so make a new layer all right so this is our first layer for this first layer, this is going to be called the blue background, because that's the first thing we're going to do. And the pen tool little markings here, by the way, what I ended up doing is kind of having it in quadrants almost. If you guys want to see my quadrants, you guys can see these little rulers here. I'm basically clicking around here, right? This little sort of like, I guess you would say closest to the middle here, but also close to the middle here. So I'm going to just simply say, right here, I'm going to click in this middle, in this area here. Of course, you're not going to have this template in a way to kind of go with. If you guys want to maybe take a screenshot of this actual video right here, and then you can kind of like follow along. Otherwise, just simply just kind of like imagine that the background's not here, but just kind of make your own shape as it is. But this shape as well works really, really good because it's just, just a good looking shape, honestly. So when I click in this little uh, section right here, I'm going to just simply just hold, or when I hold it, right, just drag it down toward the bottom right of my actual mouse pad. You can see where my mouse is basically going when I click just by simply just watching where our mouse actually is going. So click bottom right. You get that first angle here. And I'm going to move over to the third quadrant on the right hand side here, bottom right. Simply just click in the middle almost basically. Click and just drag it over toward the right. Right. And then one more time and just kind of click down here in this area over here. And this will help you guys move that curve this way. So if you want to move your anchors and all that cool stuff, let's say if you don't have, you don't like how this looks, even though this looks perfectly fine. Um, I'm just trying to get mine as perfect as possible for how I had it before. What I'm going to end up doing is holding control, click on these handles here, right? I'm just going to simply just move toward the right. You can see how that matches there. You can move things in to kind of push your curve in a little bit more. You can simply just move this curve in to push that in a little bit more. And I would say that's fairly good, really quick. And that's how you basically get the same exact angles, kind of moving your anchor points um, and your handles in different directions, left or right, to kind of make sure you kind of shrink and or extend a curve, right? So once you have this portion here, you wanna make sure you just go around the actual canvas, just like so. That way you're saying this side and this side right here is all where my, uh, my how do you say, my shape is gonna be, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, fill, drop down color, and the first blue that we're using is this uh, sort of like dark blue, navy blue in a way, and its actual hex code is 222C34. You guys do the same exact color as me. Press okay. <laughs> and that is how you guys get this portion right here. So. What I want to do is do not actually delete your path because we're going to end up doing is using this to make these little indentions here. And it just makes it a little more easier for you guys to just kind of using the same exact path rather than doing it over again or using marketing tool selection because you guys don't have, you'll notice that this is going to get cut off here if I try to move this, right? So if you did a marketing tool selection, you kind of move it toward the right, you're not going to fully get the path. So just keep the same exact path, make a new layer, right? And this layer here is going to be called the indention. Is that how you spell indention? I have no idea. Um, right. Once I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and alt, select the canvas, uh, select the actual canvas, but the, uh, the path. Once again, if you guys clicked off to select back on it and make sure you select all the points, all you have to do is hold control, alt, 
click on it, you'll select all the points, and then what you can do is hold control, hold shift as well, and move it over toward the left, just about to get about, a, you know, a couple, three or four inches, that's basically three inches, right? Or it's two inches, maybe. Um, or an inch, I have no idea. How big is a fucking inch anyway? I have had seen a ruler in a long time. <laughs> Why is it on my head? Um, anyway, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna right click, make a selection, press OK, and this will basically do is give us a selection of the same exact shape, but also just simply moved over toward the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a black right here, a simple, just a good old black foreground color. Take a brush, a pretty good size brush. I'll say about 650 is a pretty good uh, size brush for this, as long as you're in the 1920 by 1080p um, resolution, uh, which is currently what I'm in. And my harness is at zero. What I want to do now is simply on this new layer, click and kind of just hover around pretty close. You can see how far, are you, or not, I'm not like right here, I'm not trying to do it right here. That's way too dark. Make sure you're outside of the area, maybe uh, a thumbnail kind of like width apart, and kind of just go around it. And when you get up here, Make sure you're giving yourself this little cool little uh this I guess you can't notice because of this right here, but in the black background. Okay, just imagine for a second. I'll show you guys in a second. But don't go all the way this way, right? You don't want to tie them together that way. It can look cool if you guys want to try it, but kind of just give yourself this cool little stopping point right as soon as you get a little bit above the blue. Same thing with this side over here, right? Take it, go around, go around, and then once I get around here, I don't want to go too far in. I want to kind of tie them together. So what I'll do now is I'll press Control D to deselect. And what you guys will notice, once I actually put the uh, put the uh, blue in really quick, or the green, orange, colors, English, fucking terrible. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is uh, make a new layer, right? What I want to do is really quickly just put the orange in so you can see what the actual highlight looks like without this being in here. Uh, simply just hold control on your blue background thumbnail, right? This is not here for a second. Blue background thumbnail, hold control, uh, just select on, uh, select on it. Holy English. Right click, select inverse. <laughs> right click fill okay drop down color orange i don't know why green is in my head so much because i had the when i was doing my color scheme before i actually had the final color scheme quick little story bros i kept using green and just like i just couldn't work with the color for a second so when i'm saying these colors i'm just thinking green the entire way because i wanted to use it so bad but i couldn't so that was why i'm probably saying green so much um hex code for this orange though is e1792d press ok press ok again and then once you have your orange selected with that inverse which is going to basically give you that this shape right here just drag this below that blue background here and you can call this orange orange background right Right, so what I'm gonna do is make sure you see how the indentions are now really close together. If you guys went too far over, this is how it would look. So let me just take a nice soft brush eraser and just give them a little bit more separation. It'll just kind of tie it in a little bit better and really, honestly a little bit more cooler in my opinion. Now, if you let's just say when you're done your with the indentions, if you didn't go over enough in your opinion, somebody just move it over more if you guys want to, simply, right? And I would say this is pretty good right around here. Okay, we got our orange, we have our blue in here as well. The next part we're gonna be uh, be doing is this part right here, which happens to be this sort of tying in this blue right here, right? This little this little, this little uh, shape right here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is simply just take my pen tool, new layer, right above the indention, take my new pen tool, click drag over here, and we'll just go up this way. Did we actually tie this in right there? We did, okay. And I'm gonna kinda just kinda say, hey, that looks pretty good. Go up a little bit more. I kind of want to have a harder curve right there. So I'm going to drag that point in. And for this portion here, like once again, like I said, you can basically, what I'll do is can I like hover over all of them? Uh, there we go. You can kind of see where my actual extensions are. You can simply just take a print screen of this right here to get the same exact path as me. Um, but I'm going to say this is pretty good for me. Yes, I like that. So I'm going to go around once again, connect these on this new layer, right click, uh, fill path. Drop that news color. We're going to be using the lighter blue that's in our little color palette here, which happens to be hex code 505A63. Press OK. Press OK again. And this gives us a nice little color right here looking pretty good. Okay. Sweet. So, as you can see as well, we have this little sort of part uh, where you have this little, uh, how do you say, highlight as well. And I'll do that right now. Again, we're going to call this like light blue background. Okay. So, for this portion here, and I believe that I have this on a, uh, I think I had it on Linear Dodge or something, a Linear Dodge or Color Dodge. I might have had it on Color Dodge is what I might have had it on. Yep, I think I had it on Color Dodge, and I also added, on this light background, I believe, a very small size 1, put on the outside, 
right? Size one, this little color here that I use for the nice little blue or uh, I guess white, but besides being white, it's kind of like an offset white with a blue hue to it. And this hex code is C E E A F zero, press okay, press okay again. And then you have this nice little sort of like white um, outline to kind of separate a little bit more as well. You can, you can kind of see it when you look at it here, right? But I think I lowered the opacity quite a bit. I'll do the same exact thing here again then. I'll say right around like maybe like 35 or so is where I usually go to. It looks pretty good. It kind of separates the shape a little bit more and kind of gives a nice little sort of like uh, edge cut to it. So what I'm going to do, hold control on the slight background, take my M marquee tool here, and then simply just drag this baby a little bit further down. Right here, I would say. And then all I'm going to end up doing is taking a nice little brush on the new layer, taking a, I believe it's a white this time, right? Brush, kind of going around just like so. Put that right there, put that there, and right there. Now what I'm going to do is just simply take it on overlay, or we'll put it on, which one was it on? I think it was on overlay. Let's go with overlay for now, and I'm just going to duplicate it a couple times, see if that looks better. And then merge it all together. Yeah, okay, cool. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is take the eraser on these hard edges here. Just let me just erase around, uh, not on the, the dentions, the heck? Right here, there we go. What I might do is actually take this, cut and drag it up a little bit more. What I ended up doing right there, just kind of see how like a little bit too uh, close it is to the right hand side. Take my rectangle marquee tool, highlight over that, right click, layer via cut, and then simply just take my arrow keys, or my uh, V key, uh, click V, the move tool, right? And just hold shift and just move it up, just like so. This right here, same thing, take my eraser, kind of erase it like so. Think that looks pretty good and I'm happy with that. So this right here is our highlight one, and this is right here now is our highlight two. I'm naming it all for you guys so you guys use it as the actual template, but I might, I, might, I might give you my original one. It all just depends, right? So now the last part for me to do, besides really the little text that's really, really easy, I want to show you guys a really cool preset. And what I'm going to do is simply just do this little shape right here. So for that, all you have to do, right click. Okay, new layer. On this new layer here, you just want to kind of, we're, get, we're really honestly guessing because we don't have, like, we can't, like, kind of hover over and click with the magic wand tool or anything like that. So I'm going to take my pen tool, be, like, fairly close to the edge here. And on this shape right here, they should be able to do this in one simple click. Drag this all the way toward the right. Right, and kind of angle it pretty well. I think it looks pretty good. Hold Alt on your keyboard. If you guys do not hold Alt and click on it, you guys will end up with this curve right here. Hold Alt to actually cancel that anchor point that's going on or that handle that's going on on the right-hand side. And I'm going to click once again on the top left. Once I just kind of like click, drag really quickly, hold, excuse me, Control on this left handle and just drag it down toward the left, bottom left. And let's say, okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to hold Alt again, click on that, combine these two together, and kind of make sure they're on the same exact level at least. Somewhat close, and I think that's pretty good. That's actually pretty, really good. All right, move that up one uh, little pixel, kind of like move this a little bit this way. Maybe this a little bit this way. I hope I just fixed some of you guys' OCD as well as I just had to do for myself. Uh, on this new layer here, I'm going to so right-click, fill path, I can just drop down to use any color that's on there because we've been using a gradient for this video here today. So I'm going to double click on this. Once I have this layer all filled in, layer styles, uh, uh, gradient overlay, I believe I have this saved to, I believe it was this one here. So the hex code for this is basically on the left hand side is completely black. And on the right hand side is basically, I believe the same color as like the actual background that we use for this light blue here. So, uh, or somewhat close to it. Hex code 425768, um, eight. Press OK, press OK again. And what I'm going to end up doing is taking my angle and moving my black so it's more toward the uh, the top side. So I'm going to say angle at around like 142 is pretty good. Uh, pretty good. What I might also do as well is have it so that my blue is a little bit more overpowering toward the black. So it's basically taking my midpoint here. You see how you can see the black is really, really far in the middle. If you take this and move this left, you'll see that your blacks get lesser and your blue gets more. I guess you would say, right? It'll hold more space. So what I'm doing, press OK. Press OK once again. And then for this part here, what I'm doing is I'm going to just take a nice little duplicate of this right here. So once you have your gradient, you make sure this is the gradient you want to have. You can right click, copy that layer style. So that way you don't have to do it again or have to do it again on this right here. But for now, I'm just finish this one off. So make sure you copy that layer style so you can do it again and copy it for the next time. Or just save the gradient. And if you guys want to do that, you just simply just click when you have this gradient open, this table open, press new. And you'll add a new one right there. Okay. So once you have this, you want to right click. Rasterize this layer type. You want to go ahead and just take a duplicate of this. So basically, press Control J on your keyboard, right? Right click, 
uh, Crinkle Mask, just like so. And then take this, put this on, I believe it was Color Dodge, or Linear Dodge Add, right? Take your movement tool and just simply just move it over toward the right and a little bit up, right? And a little bit up. And you get this pretty nice little sharp angle right here. And that looks really, really good. So this right here is our little, uh, I don't know, uh, additional one, right? And this is additional two, sure. Okay, and what I'm gonna end up doing is doing it one more time. So taking this pen tool over here, getting pretty close to the edge, getting pretty close to the inside, go ahead and try to follow this angle, hold alt, and go ahead and make this angle here. Uh, I would say that's pretty good for now. Yeah, that's not bad. And then connect it, right click, fill the path any color, doesn't matter whatsoever, because we're gonna be doing is right clicking, pacing layer style, taking my gradient, going back to where it says the angle here, and change it so that my black is more toward the uh, top left over here. So that's negative 60 of that angle. And press OK. Right click, rasterize layer type. I can now, besides holding Control J, I can also make a hold Alt and dragging the layer above it. Right click, clipping mask. Change that uh, blending mode from normal to a linear dodge add. And then taking my movement tool with the V, the keyboard, right? And then moving it toward right here. I would just say basically a little bit further down. And there we got little angles now right there. Looking pretty good so far. I'm happy with this. Okay, cool. So for the text portion here, I believe it's probably like the most coolest part of this as well. Um, it gives you a very simple, clean little text. So what I'm going to do is I'm just typing the words uh, starting. Now the font that I'm using in today's video, I believe it was this one for that. It is this one. And the font for this, sorry, let me just put this sort of in the middle first, is uh, I believe it was Evil Gruel. Yeah, so it's a very old font, Evil Gria. Um, I had this in my like like my second ever font pack. I just wanted to use it for today's video and then my second little subtext right here is actually I believe it's just like simply Let me scroll up really quick uh, Take off favorites. It's Gotham narrow. So I'm gonna put starting or stream Is starting Just take this shrink this down to a good size and I'm gonna go ahead. So that was my phone I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this to a pretty good size and normal overlay for that portion here. And for this little starting soon screen, or starting uh, uh, text effect, I'm gonna just double click on the starting, right? I'm gonna go ahead and go to my styles really quickly because I have it saved for you guys. You can have the same exact one that I have. The first sort of like little, um, I guess you say layer style for the first portion here is simply just taking your text. It's basically pure white, right? But you're gonna have your inner glow on. Um, right here, the inner glow is a, uh, a passage, just put 25 for just sake of OCD, zero choke, five size, and then the gradient overlay, which is going to take over the color, happens to be a nice little sort of offset white here. So the left side right here is uh, hex code D, double E, zero E, seven, press OK. And then the right hand side here is more of like a grayish tone with a blue hue to it, um, is A3, A4, B3. Now you can definitely copy these exact colors for you guys. You can get the same exact um, looking as the text as me. But also my midpoint is a little bit closer toward the right hand side. That's kind of basically favor the black or the darker side, I guess you would say, right? As you can see right here, if I just kind of see, uh, let's move this over more, not favor the darker side, it's gonna favor the lighter side. So you can see if it's too far to the left, it's gonna be too dark, I'm not gonna be able to see that white. Take this, move that over toward the right. You'll see that the darker is more up here and that white is a little more taking over. So press okay, press okay again. And then for this portion here, what you wanna do is basically take your text, your starting text, take this, Make a duplicate by just simply holding Alt, drag it below it. Now you can just simply right click, uh, clear layer styles, double click back on it, right? I'm gonna take styles again for the U, and I'm gonna just have it show you guys really quickly. And for this right here, for your next layer styles, you're gonna put on the stroke. And for your stroke color, just simply just use the background color right here. You can just simply just click right there, you'll find the background color. And the size for this is 10, uh, about 10 size, and your opacity is at 100. Um, your color is like what I said it is. Now, if you guys want a gradient, you can just simply click on the color type, click gradient. You guys put a gradient in there as well. Kind of cool as well. So you want to go ahead and take your inner glow. And for your inner glow, you're going to take it and put your blend mode to color dodge, opacity 25, size 4, choke 0, and your range right here at 50 if you get if it's not already. I believe that's default though. And last but not least, your drop shadow has to be turned on for 25, 0 spread, 10 size, opacity around 70% or so. And that's just simply giving you this right, nice little sort of opacity or drop shadow little look right there. If you guys want to push it even longer or push it further, you guys can even lower your opacity down a little bit more as well. I think it looks pretty good. And once you guys have that, you simply just press OK on your keyboard. And you want to take your movement tool here and just drag it down right like, I guess like a little bit further. Just I would say maybe your pixel or two right below where you can see it's no longer there. Pixel or two, see that right there? 
I think that gives you, I guess, a pretty good look to it. And I am fairly happy about how that looks. Okay. Yep. I think I'm a fan. Also, I think I believe what I ended up doing was putting a gradient on this as well. The same gradient that I had before. Or what I could even do is kind of mix it up for today's tutorial. Why not? And put a nice little color in because why the hell not? Let's put like an orange. How would that look? If I put like a gradient overlay orange besides the white one that we used before, how would that look? I'm a fan and I'm not, I'm not I'm happy about that. I'm, I'm fine about that. So what I'm going to do now is to finally finish this thing off. And what's this? This is that little indention part here. Let's just put add three. And this is add four. That's text. That's duplicate. You guys just saw that. But what I'm going to do is take my orange background here. Take this. Drag it above. Right? Just like so. While holding alt. It gives me a nice little duplicate of it. Take my movement tool. Dragging this up toward the top right. You guys can't see it. Okay, let me just actually put this on linear dodge add first. Or soft light or screen. Let's just go with linear dodge add for now. Lower the opacity down. Okay. I'm going to just take this. Drag it up towards the top right. And you can guys kind of figure out where you guys want to have. I'm going to say right around here is pretty good. Besides lowering my opacity, by the way, I'm going to lower my fill. That way, anything I put on this layer actually is still visible at its 100% opacity. If you guys don't know what that means, simply your opacity takes your entire opacity, lowers it down to about, you know, wherever it wants to be. But if you take your fill and lower it down to, I'm going to say, what does it have it at? 35 or so? Uh, if I put any layer styles on it, those will be at 100 opacity as well, unless you lower them um, individually in like a stroke path right here. I'm going to take this. I'm gonna just say, hey, I want to have like a nice little like, like a almost like a kind of like a white yellowish kind of stroke. Put the size around maybe two or so. You can see the stroke is actually the same exact opacity at 100. Um, if you guys lower your, uh, of course, your opacity down or lower the entire thing down. But now I can just kind of physically, uh, individually, just lower my opacity if I want to lower it down. But I'm gonna say I'm gonna keep it at 100%. And I'm gonna go ahead if you guys want to as well. You can put a pattern in here. If you guys have any patterns, you just lower the opacity down a little bit. It could be a pretty cool uh, addition to it. But for now. I'm going to leave this as so, and that basically ends the tutorial on how to create your old very cool little starting soon screen. Of course, this is where you can change the text to making it say, you know, ending soon or intermission. You can have like a little intermission um, really quickly, actually, if you guys want to actually do intermissions, because I feel like that's something you guys want to know as well. The way I do them, by the way, is I just group everything together. Uh, I'm just going to group everything together, right? And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make a duplicate of it, right? Make a duplicate of that group. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just simply just press control E on my keyboard. That'll go ahead and merge it all together. And then let's just pretend the text is not here for a second though. What I'm gonna be doing is just taking a new layer, taking my M marquee tool, clicking the top left corner all the way outside the canvas, all the way to the bottom right of the canvas, filling it in with any background color, which is basically holding Alt and Backspace. Control D to then deselect. That's I know it's kind of fast, but I mean it's literally just kind of like making a square. Um, once you kind of fill that background in or right click fill, you guys can just go ahead and right click deselect or control D, right? And then you want to use a movement tool. Once again, your V in your keyboard, control T in your keyboard, and then just kind of push this in. You can write the word intermission right here on the top. Now let's just say we want to give it to someone else, by the way. Uh, when you save it, make sure all your backgrounds are not no longer seen. You have your duplicated layer right here, right? Where it has all merged together. Hold control, uh, click on that white background that or that you know that score that you just made just now. Hide it. Click back on your actual layer that's actually all merged together. You press delete in your keyboard. And then what you can do is you'll have your person, if it's a client and or yourself, is you do, you have this above, uh, I guess on if you're in Streamlabs, right, you would have this above it and your camera below it. So that way you have this little sort of like easy way to kind of size it in. And you can have the word animation on the top right here. You can have the chat on the right. If you guys want to just move it over to the left and make it smaller. But that is basically how you would do that. Now, also, I'm going to make another duplicate of this exact same we just did. Control E to merge it together. And to put the actual color scheme on it, I didn't put it on it before, but you want to right click, convert to a smart object. Then you want to go to filter. You want to go to camera filter raw. And then this will just bring you guys up your nice little color correction. So what I'm going to end up doing is just taking my temperature, maybe move it left, um, taking my tint, moving it right a little bit. I'm going to say like negative three, honestly, not too much. <laughs> and then like positive two. But I'm going to do personally going to be doing is taking my clarity, bringing this quite a far up. I'm going to say like about 30 or so. And I'm going to go back to my little hue, um, HSL in adjustments, basically hue, saturation, luminance adjustments. I'm going to go into my saturation here. Or no, I'm going to go my hue. I'm going to take my oranges, right? I'm going to move it left and right and kind of follow, find this nice little darker orange. I can take my blues, move it over to left and right. You can see what nice, you can get some really, really dope colors as long as you start off with some really good colors, which I did help you guys with. Um, that green looks super dope. What the hell? Messing around with the yellow. It kind of looks like kind of like a vintage kind of look to it. 
Ooh, yeah, see, you can find a really good color scheme by just messing around with this. You don't have to mess around with saturation too much, but if you guys wanted to, of course, you can just take your blues, throw them up. You can take your yellows, throw them up if you need to, oranges, throw them up if you need to. But press OK, and once you guys are done, let's just say you don't really like your colors anymore, if you want to go back into it, as long as you made it into a smart object, like I said before, which is converting to a smart object, uh, before you click on the camera filter on your filters, you can simply just go back into it with all the same settings as before and change it and freely go back and kind of mess around with it a little more. So, now that means I am done, I am complete. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. As always, guys, tone likes, as always, as always, as always, as always, I always say that. And I really, I really want to find something else to say, but it just flows out of my mouth. I sometimes don't even know what I'm saying. But tone likes on, my, on the keyboard. <laughs> tone likes on the video equals a secret download below. Okay, there we go. That's if you guys have never heard what I say there, that is basically what I said. Okay, um, yeah. I was gonna say, I was gonna say as always again. I need to stop. I need to figure out how to end my videos. I always do this. I literally always do this. I love you guys. I appreciate every last one of you guys. And of course, like I said before, I think we're at like around 600 or so more subscribers, so 100k. Um, I'm excited for it, man. I really, really personally am. I can't wait to see your reaction when I actually go ahead and show you guys what I've been working on for you guys for the little special. And uh, yeah. Um, anyway, like I said before, I'm done. I'll talk to you guys later. Since I you out, uh, do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. I literally love you guys. I'm just so silly when I'm with you guys. I'm just silly. I'm just silly. Let's stop this.